Hey guys, what's up? Tempers are here again for Let's Talk episode number three. And uh, tonight, I'm just going to be talking about a few little things. Nothing really important or uh, too serious. But um, first thing that I do want to talk about is the PlayStation 4 that just came out. And um, how the PlayStation Network isn't even online yet. And all these malfunctions with the hardware, it's just pretty crazy. And it does give a huge advantage to the Xbox One that's going to be coming out on the 22nd of November pretty soon. And um, pretty much all the Xbox has to do is just not fuck up. And, you know, keep everything the same. Don't do anything drastic when it comes out. And I think it's safe to assume that the Xbox Live servers aren't going to go down. They're not. They're going to be up uh, right when it launches on the 22nd. Because, you know, as you all remember, PlayStation Network did get, get hacked by somebody and that someone uh, tried to do it on the Xbox Live servers and it didn't work because unlike Sony, Microsoft does invest tons and tons of money in getting very good servers for their online players and all that. And PlayStation Network gets free, you know, so you can't really expect too much with that and you do have to pay money to play on Xbox Live and it's worth it seeing how it barely ever goes down. I actually can't even remember the last time the Xbox Live servers went down, but anyways, um, next thing I kind of want to talk about is, you know, I don't think really a lot of people have uh, an understanding of kind of like who Tamperistic is, you know, how I got the name, so that's pretty much what this episode is going to be, be about. Just how I got the name, you know, me going to Major League Gaming Tournaments and all that jazz and how it came about. So, um, I just want to get this done really fast. The first time I ever heard about Halo was in middle school. Uh, my friend Joe and his friend Harrison were just talking about it, and I never heard about Halo. So I was just kind of intrigued, kind of curious, you know, what they were talking about. And they explained it to me. I went over to my friend uh, Joe's, his friend's house to play it. I played Halo 1 and I played Halo 2, and it was just crazy, you know, because I... have before that, just played on the DS and the PlayStation with um, not really the best graphics compared to the Xbox, the original Xbox with Halo 1 and Halo 2. And I never knew that online multiplayer was even available. So when I did hop on, it was just incredible. It was just a new world to me. And since then, I pretty much never played the PlayStation again. I sold it to, I sold that. I sold. I had like 40, 50 games of the PlayStation uh, 1 and 2, and I just sold all those to get my Xbox, uh, my first Xbox, and then uh, I got Halo 2, and that was pretty much the only game I had. It was the only game I needed to play because that game was just a game changer, you know? Uh, Call of Duty at that time when Halo 2 was around, it, it was it was nothing. It was just It was just a game, you know? It wasn't the colossal titan that it is now but um i remember halo 2 just playing it you know being in my chair with that crappy green microphone that would like jab into your ear if you guys remember that and uh i'd just be you know super jumping just playing matchmaking just trying to get better and all that <laughs> and uh just falling asleep in my chair because i just i didn't want to stop playing and i'd wake up and just keep on playing you know so it was just it's just crazy to remember all that and how it how it was to how it is now, and um, how I'd rather sleep than play and it was just different back then, in like two thousand six two thousand seven. And um, you guys already know I found out about uh, Major League Gaming in two thousand middle of two thousand and six, um, and you know I saw it on I saw it on uh, Channel Two USA Network and uh, that was back when Major League Gaming did broadcast the events live um, on television and you know they had Halo 2, they had Gears of War 1, uh, they had Super Smash Brothers and I don't know if they had anything else but um, you know first time seeing it blown away didn't think something like this existed and um, didn't think esports existed and uh, you know went on their website signed up and you know just got involved in the community and learned about uh, how to go to MLG tournaments. Didn't go to my first one until uh, Dallas 2009 just because didn't have the money. You know, needed to get a little bit better. Wanted to be well prepared for my first event and uh, 
trying to get teammates that I was comfortable with playing with and, uh, you know, just want to just wanted to go there, not waste money, just go there thinking that I could win, you know, don't want to go with teammates that I don't, I'm not confident that we could take first place. So, um, I, I don't want to skip anything, just, I play, I, I played clan matches, you know, uh, just team hardcore, nothing too competitive, uh, I don't know if, I think Game Battles was around back then, I'm not too sure, but, uh, I, I didn't, I didn't know about Game Battles until, um, after I found about, found out about, uh, Major League Gaming, and that was a while after that. And, uh, I pretty much just, you know, had fun in Halo 2, uh, was it a DOG, KSI, IGC, um, probably another clan, and just did clan matches, played Team Hardcore, tried to get my 50, failed, got stuck at a 30, 30-something, 30 32, I don't even know, but, and then, uh, super jumping for the other times, you know, just, uh, I, I had connections with other people who knew, uh, modders, and we just played modded racetracks, and pretty much Halo 2 was just about having fun, you know, getting good at the game, and trying to transfer that skill over to Halo 3, where I was gonna take it, uh, very seriously, and try to, you know, go pro. So, 2007, Halo 3 came out, I didn't get it until, uh, about a month after it came out in October, and I uh, started playing it. I got a team together on game battles. We 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 were all right. We we, we uh, argued a lot, and we didn't do as well as we wanted to. So you know, the team broke up and had a couple other game battles teams. And then um, the first real team that we actually did go to a major league gaming event was it was me, the last one, uh, Inferno Rain, and Mark Peebles. And we went there, we ended up getting round two, you know, expectations, first event, not much there. Uh, but just disregarding the placement, it was just about getting into that atmosphere, the feeling of being in a huge convention center, surrounded by people that love the same thing you do, which is, you know, playing video games competitively, playing them to try to win money, try to get your self-known you know all that stuff and it's just crazy having all these vendors everywhere free dr pepper free gum free hot dogs outside you know ballpark franks and you're seeing everyone being interviewed and you just it's just mind-blowing you, you, you don't have time to think about it because there's like you look left there's stuff over there right there's stuff over there and there's stuff in front of you it's just it's crazy you know and you know, there's just like, it, it doesn't seem like there's downtime between games because there's still a lot to do in uh, in between games. You know, you could check out the vendors, you could sign up to win prizes, and then uh, the main stage back then, you know, they had the bleachers, not the stupid chairs that they have now. They had the bleachers where it felt like, like you were isolated from the rest of the convention center, and that was when Halo was at its, you know, its peak, and it was... It was the star of Major League Gaming, but unfortunately, Call of Duty is the star of Major League Gaming now. Um, so, obviously, with that, the team broke up, and then the next event would be Anaheim 2009. With that, uh, with that event, I teamed with Beastu, uh, Diaz, and fourth was Koza. And uh, I just want to talk about Koza. Koza is a teammate that anyone would want to have. He he didn't just like he wasn't just like a smart player. He put in the effort to make the team better. He after each uh, night we you know we all got off we go to bed do our whatever. He would go in the theater and somehow he would just take everyone's stats and he would uh, make a Excel. Um, Excel page, a file, and he'd jot everything down, and then he'd email us the file, and he'd, you know, show us who has the most kills on our team, you know, just the statistics and stuff, just something cool to look at, and, uh, he was just, I'd say he was the captain of the team, you know, he just put in the most effort, but we did go to Anaheim 2009, um, not much different from Dallas, other than you know it's not it's I don't have to fly this time. It you know it's going to be an easy drive, an easy uh, uh, three hour drive, two and a half hour, I don't know, something like that. 
and uh, got a hotel and oh no Dallas I want to correct myself Dallas 09 it was not inside of a convention center it was actually inside of the hotel the Anatole in Dallas it's a huge hotel with a big like statue fountain in the middle and it's just awesome and um, so yeah that was a hotel. Anaheim was the one that had the convention center, and obviously it was bigger. Um, from what I saw from Dallas 09, and uh, surprising, uh, su surprisingly enough, there was a lot of people that attended because you know it's on the West Coast. Most of the gamers are on the East Coast, Mid East, Middle. You know they don't want to spend all the money to fly over to the West Coast, and they know that. Um, Usually there's not a lot of people that come out to the West Coast events, but there, there was actually a lot. I think it did sell out. Um, and we did end up getting losers back at round four. Two placings ahead of my last placing, whoop de doo But, um, you know, I always want to come to the events and win. I don't want to walk home with second place, even though you still walk home with money. I just don't want to walk home with anything but first place, you know. Just the competitive nature of me. And... Um, our teammate, our teammate uh, was playing in a Master Chief costume, so that was pretty funny. And um, let's see, that's about it. Um, kind of wasted my time with a team, with an online team that we kind of didn't really do anything. Uh, but I don't really want to get into detail. But uh, just a little, I just want to give a little advice to people who are making teams for any game. This just this just goes with any game that you have a team, you know. If you are uncomfortable at all with the players on your team, you don't get along with them, they don't listen to you, they won't take your criticism, or, um, you know, stuff like that, you don't think you're going to go far with them, don't don't think about it. Just leave. Once you get that feeling, that, that uneasy feeling, you have any doubts, talk to your team. And if you still have any doubts, just leave the team because that's that's the mistake that I made back in uh, Halo 3. I didn't leave my team when I had doubts. I stuck it through because I I just thought that things were gonna change, but they didn't. So it's always you know it sucks being a free agent. It really does. But you know there's a couple you know good things that come from being a free agent. One, you can create your own team. You could do your own thing your way. And you can have your own standards or requirements for joining the team, you know, having event experience, equipment, money, all that jazz. Or if you have connections, you know, you could join you can easily join another team of three that have been playing for a while, you know, and there's just, there's a lot of options for you when you're a free agent and when you're just stuck with the same team all the time and you guys and you think you're not going anywhere, you guys don't really put in the time, like, you know, you just you gotta move on when you have those doubts. But uh moving on. See, after Anaheim 09, I did not go to another MLG event until Anaheim 2011, just because I was, um, you know, no more money, you know, just went to two events back to back, and, uh, you know, I didn't have a job, so I wasn't the one paying for it, my grandparents and my parents were, so, you know, they're not making out of money, so I just had to wait a little while. And uh, did try to get a sponsor. I did want to keep going to events. You know, I kept practicing. I hit up every sponsor. But the thing about hitting up sponsors is you've got to, you've got to entice them. You've got to draw them in. You've got to put something out on the table that they're that they're gonna want to grab onto. You know. And when you're talking to a sponsor, it's not about what they can do for you. It's what you can do for them. It's got to be mutual. It's got to be a mutual thing. It cannot be, you know, you. Helping them or them helping you it has to be you guys helping each other. You know, if they're gonna pay for your airfare, if they're gonna pay for your pass, if they're gonna pay for your hotel, you've gotta be like, okay, if you do this for me, I'll advertise you on Twitter. I'll uh, change my gamer tag to have my to have your, um, you know, your logo in front of mine. For example, if I was sponsored by, uh, let's see, I don't even know. Um, I don't know. Let's just say I was sponsored by Hot Pockets, right? I would change my gamer tag from Temporistic Incorporated to uh, HP Space Temporistic, you know, to support them. I put it in my mind, on my bio, you know. You you just gotta you gotta you know do them favors if they're gonna do a huge favor and put a lot of money uh, behind you. 
and um, you know you got to be like I'll, I'll make a Facebook fan page and I'll get one. you just got to do something you know and uh, just be just just say say whatever you think is gonna get them to um, help you out you know be don't don't make them think that you're desperate but just throw a bunch of stuff on the table that they're gonna you know like be unique be different because they get a lot of applications every single day saying hey I'm different I'm good give me a chance you know everybody wants a chance you know, I want a chance, but it doesn't mean you're going to get it. You know, you have to put in the work. You got to show that you mean business, that you're going to take it seriously, you know? And, uh, so I hit up, I hit up, you know, Dr. Pepper, Hot Pockets, hit up, uh, all the headset companies, Steel Series, Triton, Turtle Beaches, Astros, but, you know, when they're sponsoring pros, like, freaking, uh, uh, Native was sponsored by Stride, and so was Ogre 2, uh, Dr. Pepper's sponsoring T2, you know, they already have their players, and then Red Bull was sponsoring Status Quo. They already have their players, so they don't really need to sponsor any amateur players. But um, it was worth a try. You know, it's always good to just try. You know, even though you, you are pretty positive they're not going to pick you up, you know, it, it never hurts to try and just let them know that you're out there and you're, you know, willing to do whatever it takes to help them if they can help you, you know, scratch, scratch each other's backs. But... Uh, just the interval between 2009 to 2011, you know, just practicing and practicing and practicing, uh, playing LG and all that. And then Anaheim 2011 came along, and uh, that was with Halo Reach. And, you know, with Halo Reach, Bloom, all that stuff. But Halo Reach didn't really piss me off as much as Halo 4 pissed me off, just because with the Bloom, I kind of found, like, a rhythm with it, so I wasn't that mad, you know. I was actually pretty good at timing my shots. And, uh, you know, went to Anaheim 2011, and I'd say, you know, obviously, round, getting losers back around five, best placing. Um, even though I've only been to three events, you could say I'm improving event placing-wise. But uh, played, played against Ninja's team, winners back around four, and that was turning point with Ninja, Best Man, Mickwin, and Walshy, uh, with Coach... Tiberius Oddly, if I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, I think that was it was no, it was either Oddly or it was Waldo. I'm not sure, but it was one of those, and they that was the coach turning point. They ended up getting seventh place at Anaheim 2011, which the event did sell out. Uh, the next three events, which were Rally Orlando and Providence, I think they slowly declined, and you know led to Halo being taken off the circuit, but um. So we played we played our first game and it was it was countdown team slayer. We were tied twenty five to twenty five and then, you know, they got rockets, they got sniper and it was a done deal. We lost fifty to thirty two and um at least we didn't get staked. Then the next time the next uh game was CTF on Sanctuary and we were playing split screen all um all event. So this was the first time that we didn't have um uh, split screen and obviously, that means that this is our first time during the event playing uh, a Forge World map, a Forge map, because you know you know how laggy it gets when you play a Forge map on split screen with all the frame rate issues and all that. But uh, we we were holding them off, you know, we held them off for six minutes, and then they three would us. But um, I just wish I could have saved that because the way I was playing, it was just it was just crazy. I was. Um, you know, I was getting behind them and backsmacking them and all that stuff, but wish it would have saved that. Anyway, uh, got round five. We lost to people that we shouldn't have lost to in um, loser back in round five, but don't want to talk about it. And um, anyway, that would be the last event that I would go to. And uh, the reason why I didn't go to Rally, Orlando, Providence, and even Columbus 2012 was no money, you know? So, uh, right now, if I wanted to, I could go to events. I did not go to any arena gaming events just because... Um, I, I'm not going to say that I predicted what... You know, I didn't think it was going to happen with AGL shutting down and being shady like that. But um, I never, I just never felt right with AGL. They never got past, like, 
Uh, did, I don't even know if they even got like 64 teams for one event because you know I want to go to when I go to an event I want there to be tons of people there I want to have tons of competition you know I want I want there to be, be like at least two 100 teams 100 teams and I'll go you know and um, if the Orange County one would have happened I would have definitely gone there because that is the event where they would have actually held it inside of a convention uh, venue. Because all the other previous events were held in land centers and all that. And it's like small, claustrophobic space. They had one in like a basement of a land center. It's, uh, that's not my cup of tea though. But um, other than that, it's been t two years. It's been two years since I've been to an LG, uh tournament. Uh, I, would, I would compete in Call of Duty, but I just, I can't. I can't play Call of Duty competitively, you know, it, it's it's not a competitive game in my eyes, you know, playing 4v4s on 5v5, 6v6 maps that were made for, you know, that, um, but hopefully Halo 5 gets picked up if it's uh, good enough for MLG and then I'll be going back to the MLG tournaments, um, let's see. I think that's all I wanted to talk about. Um, I guess I'll, I'll talk about how I got the name Temporistic. So, uh, back in my sophomore year in high school, I was thinking of names, and I wanted to be original. I wanted to make a name that I've never seen before, so I chose Temper because I would get mad, you know, rage, nerd rage, and all that jazz, and people out, out there that play with me a lot, you know how much I rage and how mad I get, and so that name stuck with me for a while, uh, the original name Temper, I couldn't just have T-E-M-P-E-R because it was taken by some guy that, I don't even know, his name is just Temper, I don't even know what the hell he does, um, so I made the gamer tag. I to the temper, so you know, with neighbor, his gamer tag was N to the Aber. Instead of having the, I put D, so it'd be I space the number two capital D space temper. And uh, 2D was actually supposed to be a team name that me and my friend uh, were uh, making or starting to make, and it was called Define Divine. And instead of having D, D, it would be two Ds, two Ds, you know. And uh, so after that, I changed my gamer tag to, I believe, St. Nick's Temper. You know, my first name's Nick, my last name's Claus, so I changed my name to St. Nick, as in San, you know. And uh, apparently there's some guy who's gotten top 32 or he's a semi-pro at MLG tournaments that I never even heard of. And his gamer tag was Saint Nick. So I'm like, oh, cool. And then all these guys came out of the woodworks and they started talking shit like, oh, you're a poser, you know. And they thought I was actually Saint Nick. And I was just like, uh, you know what, man? I just made the gamer tag just because it, you know, makes sense because of my first and last name. If you want me to change my gamer tag, fine, no problem. So I changed my gamer tag to Temper, except on the second E of Temper, I put an X as a variable because obviously I can't have the original name Temper. And um, I had that for a while. And then during the end of Reach, I teamed up with um, Section 1, which was. Uh, me, pull out, uh, Rocky, I want to say, and then decisiveness, I think, and um, we didn't really practice that much, to be honest, so that didn't last that long, I'd say a month at the most it lasted, uh, if we did, if we were dedicated, we probably would have done really well, you know, but uh, even though I didn't go to MLG tournaments, I still played a lot in game battles, and uh, played a lot of good teams, and had fun, and all that jazz. Uh, then I changed my gamer tag to Temperistic TK, and the TK would stand for Take Notes, you know, no, you know, Take Notes, you know, stupid name, but, um, it was supposed to be some, like, clan full of people that, um, are really good at the game, and, uh, the clan leader was, well, I wouldn't even call it a clan, it was just, like, an organization, and, um, we were just supposed to go into Halo 4, you know, blasting, being big and stuff, and it never really, you know, because Halo 4 
it wasn't looking that good, and it turned out to not be that good. So, um, I left, changed my gamer tag to, um, I changed my gamer tag to, oh, Temporistic. Oh, I didn't talk about that. Um, so there's this guy whose name was Temper, and it was spelled T E H M P E R. And he lives in Pennsylvania. He's some guy who lives in Pennsylvania. He made it after I made Temper. And uh, I'm just I didn't even talk to him. I'm just like, okay, I just got I've got to come up with something even more unique. So I'm just I'm just talking to myself. I'm just saying words, and I say, temperistic. I'm like temperistic. Hey, it's temperistic. So I was like, yeah, that sounded all right. So then I made temperistic, and then um, and then after after I made temperistic, you know, time went on. Then I changed my gamer tag to S1 for section one S1 space temperistic, and then uh, I changed it to temperistic. TK, and then uh, I got a message from Temporistic saying that, ha ha, your gamer tag is now mine. I'm just like, okay, bro. So I couldn't have the original Temporistic. Um, so I just came up with Temporistic Incorporated. And um, honestly, if I can't have the name Temper, I really don't care what my gamer tag is. I could come up with something completely different, like Temper Temperica, something stupid with Temper in it, and I really won't care. I. I would probably pay a hundred dollars for that guy to give me his gamer tag, and I'd be happy. Just like I want the name Temper, I want that because then you know it's original. It's me. Nobody else. Everybody else who has the name Temper in their gamer tag is a poser, you know. But um, I mean, more or less, that's just my story. You know, that's how I became known as Temperistic. Um, you know, told you about major league gaming events, all that stuff. Um, if I left something out, if you guys want to know something else, you know, um, leave a comment down below. I'll answer your question. Right now, uh, I don't know what I'm doing right now, you know. I said I said I was going to really play Halo 4, but it's it's really difficult to play Halo 4 when you can't find a match in Team Throwdown because there's not enough people playing in it. And then you have to go into the casual playlist and try to have fun in that. And it's really not fun. So I'm popping my disc out. I'm putting Call of Duty Ghosts in just to have some fun. The game gets boring after a bunch of games. And then I pop that out. I put Halo 4 back in. And it's a freaking struggle, you know. I'm trying to stick with Halo 4. I'm trying to keep myself busy. Um, I did release I did release my, uh, my first montage, I guess. You know, if you want to call it that. Um, it's an un it's an uh, unfinished montage that I started a while ago when Halo 4 first came out, and I've just been you know messing with it here and there, and I um, uh, want to know what you guys think about it. I'm surprised that it did come out in 720p. I didn't think it would, but that's awesome that it did. It looks pretty good to me. Um, I'm not when I make montages. I'm not I'm not a guy that is gonna edit it. I'm not gonna trim it down. I'm not gonna um, I'm not gonna add amazing effects. You know, first of all, I don't know how to do that stuff. Could I learn how to do that? Yeah, probably take me 30 minutes to really learn everything, but I'm not going to do that because what what is the definition of a montage? Like, what is the point of a montage? The point of a montage is to put all of your clips into one video and have people see how good you are, the stuff you pull off, you know? all Like, all the stuff that, you, you know, the, the flashiness, the... Um, the fading in and out, all these cool effects, yeah, they're cool, they look nice, but sometimes the montage editor kind of gets carried away, I think, and they put way too much stuff, and it deludes, it, it loses away from the, uh, actual gameplay, and, you know, I don't want to add any cool effects or anything like that, you know, my, I'm putting my clips into your video just so you can see my clips, just so you can see what kind of nasty players I've pulled off since Halo 4 came out, and, um, you know, I mean, I'll put a song in there. I'm not going to just have you watch a bunch of clips. You know, that'd be boring. You know, a nice song would uh, spice it up and stuff. Um, so I am working on my second montage, a montage that's actually going to be finished with uh, a good amount of clips and uh, probably like two songs in it. And I don't know how long it's going to be, eight minutes, something like that. I'm going to try to make it look nice, cool, fine, dandy, and hopefully you hopefully you guys like it. Uh, if you're wondering if I will make you a montage, 
uh, even though you know it's just going to be a regular montage with a song in it, it's not going to be any fancy transitions or uh, editing. Uh, I'm not I'm not going to do it for free simply because I don't really ha I want to focus my time on you know getting better, practicing for Halo Five, you know just uh, just playing, you know just playing games. And uh, if you really want me to make you a montage, depending on how many clips you have, um, this, this, I'm going to charge you, you know. I'm not gonna make free uh, montages because montages take a lot of time. Even if I'm not gonna edit it, it still takes a lot of time to, um, especially in my case because I've gotta make the clips. I've got I've gotta record them in the theater system in the game, and then I have to capture all those clips, and then I have to put them all together and make sure they're they're all you know nice and organized. And then, um, what else I gotta do? I've gotta do, uh, make sure it all transitions well, you know, no glitches and all that. But it does take a lot of time. And if you do want me to make your montage, I will have to charge you. But if you want me to upload your gameplay, if you want me to upload a couple of clips, I'm not gonna charge you for that because that takes, you know, what? It doesn't even take like 30 minutes. I don't even know. But, uh,. Other than that, that's pretty much what I'm doing. Um, Xbox One comes out in the 22nd. I'm I'm gonna wait. Uh, I'm gonna wait and see if there's gonna be any trouble with the Xbox One. That's kind of gonna determine how early or, or how late I want to get my Xbox One. You know, I was planning on getting it the first week of February, and uh, starting starting uh, start getting myself ready for Titanfall with the controller and you know just you know getting a feel for the xbox one and the controls and stuff but if there are actually barely any like faults with the hardware compared to the playstation 4 i might get a little bit early um anyway i think that's about it we're approaching 33 minutes and i'm out of stuff to talk about so that means this video is over give it a like if you liked it and subscribe if you want to see more Let's Talks. If you want to see something else, you know, drop a comment down below. Or contact me on any of my social media links that are on my About page on the YouTube channel. And uh, I will get back to you. If you have any topics that you want me to talk about, you know, just let me know and I'll do it. Nothing is uh, out of the question. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time. Peace.